Right, so uh, what I will be touching upon today is um, I'll be uh, first talking about a quick intro into what an API marketplace is and especially uh, how important is it in this current setting of an integrated API supply chain. Then we we'll look a bit about the building blocks that are required to build an API marketplace. We we'll look at what uh, is there uh, today as marketplace patterns? And then finally, uh, we'll uh, touch upon uh, how you can build your own API marketplace. And I'll wrap it up with a couple of takeaways. Okay, so, so talking about marketplaces, um, if I asked you to uh, close your eyes and think about a marketplace, I'm sure the picture that comes into your mind would be something similar, very much similar to what's on the screen right now. So you would see um, people, a lot of people moving around, uh, some people uh, trying to sell merchandise, some people browsing what is uh, uh, around, then uh, uh, various goods and services out in display, uh, maybe a few side entertainment uh, items happening. So this basically is the picture that we get as a marketplace. And it's essentially uh, a gathering ground of people brought together uh, so that they can basically buy and sell goods and at the same time have a great time. So if I take a very, very basic uh, definition of a marketplace. It, it's a location where people gather to both sell and buy commodities. Now, into the definition, we throw in APIs. So API becomes the commodity here. And um, is, is this going to make things any different? So the basic concept of buying and selling still is going to be the same. So we bring in then a couple of new terminology uh, so we will be talking about API providers and we will who will be publishing APIs and we'll be talking about API consumers who are going to be discovering and then subscribing to these APIs. But the underlying experience still remains the same. Okay, so what's special about an API marketplace? If I ask that question from you, I'm sure each and every one of you would have your own list of uh, answers. To me, the following four parts, uh, four points are what is most important because uh, I feel that they basically convey the overall scope of what an API marketplace uh, is. So the first speciality of an API marketplace is that it's virtual compared to uh, the normal static marketplace that we see. However, what we need to know is that the experience which is sought is still the same. So you, the, the, the API providers and the API consumers are still uh, looking for that metaphoric experience. Then uh, an API marketplace being virtual leads on to be something which has no physical boundaries, unlike uh, a physical marketplace. So now if you have no physical boundaries, that means that marketplace needs to be connected. It needs to be accessible and available to all. So this becomes a very important uh, factor of an API marketplace. So the third uh, main point which makes an API market with, uh, special is, is the commodity itself. It's an API. Now, if you compare uh, an API marketplace with a digital marketplace, which is selling books, uh, for example, uh, an API is not an end product. In fact, an API is the start to a larger journey. So it's a building block and selling a building block means you need to value add that commodity by adding in various other uh, uh, other add-ons onto it so that that overall journey for the consumer becomes really appealing. So 
the fourth point of the sp uh, of what's special in an API marketplace is that it is technology driven. So isn't the digital marketplace technology driven? Yes, it is. But the, the difference here is, or the subtle difference here is that the providers and the consumers are also technologists here. So they expect certain advanced te technological uh, capabilities to be available within this marketplace in order to make that experience extremely fulfilling and seamless. Okay, so uh, this is basically an infographic uh, that I found on one of the world's largest API marketplaces that we have around today. I'm sure that each and every one of you would have at least heard about Rapid API Marketplace. Now, this infographic shows about the growth that Rapid API has been experiencing just in 2020. If you look at the different, um, different segments that they have put in, so, uh, if you if you take about uh, talk about the developers who have been uh, uh, signing up and uh, onto the marketplace, it has increased by six folds. This is in comparison to the same time period uh, during last year, 2019. Then, if you look at the number of APIs, uh, the number of APIs has more than doubled, and the number of API invocations has actually reached almost a trillion. So that's a massive amount of APIs plus API invocations. Then uh, if you look at the amount of paid subscription growth, again, that has also been growing really well. So uh, then Rapid API has this new concept of uh, an organization. And up to now, uh, what they claim is that there are 18K new organizations with at least 1,000 new organizations being created weekly. So that's also very rapid growth. And finally, uh, what, they are, uh, what they have also found is that some of these API, some of these API invocations have been related to a lot of uh, uh, APIs that were used in order to provide information for COVID-19 responses. So a lot of growth that we're seeing here within a very short period of time. And interestingly, when the world is in a pandemic situation. So what do these statistics actually mean? To me, they simply reinforce that the value of an API marketplace in an integrated supply chain of APIs uh, is mandatory. So it, it's, it, it just says that a marketplace has become a mandatory component today. Now, how, how do I actually come to that conclusion? So the reasons that I came to that conclusion looking at these numbers were essentially, if you look at the number of APIs exposed and invoked, so that still means that the back uh, the legacy integrations that are there, uh, the various types of integrations are still in demand. Now, reuse of these is promoted by making them accessible and making them more usable. So how better to do it than making an API out of it? So APIs become the most common building block. And that actually proves that APIs definitely are the new products of the 21st century. Then if you look at the volume of organizations involved in uh, Rapid API, so that actually proves that more and more organizations today are moving to having their own API marketplace. And one additional thing that we also, I, I also need to mention is that uh, it was also mentioned that uh, uh, the enterprise version of the enterprise API hub uh, of Rapid API is also something which is being sought for a lot. So that again indicates that organizations today, enterprises today, really do feel the importance of an API marketplace. Then finally, the volume of developers 
and paid subscriptions. So that means that the, the marketplace actually is, has become a place uh, where a lot of innovation happens. So you, if, if you're a developer, you have an idea, you think about something and then you come, uh, if you're an application developer, and you come to a marketplace and start looking around for that API that you had in mind. When you're doing that, you would see other APIs and then your either your idea becomes bigger or you have uh, ideas that would basically be things that you never thought about, but which would certainly add value to your application. So uh, how did all of that happen? It's because you came and visited a marketplace where you have multiple providers providing various APIs that could be related, that could be sometimes not related at all, but still valid for your business idea. And of course, innovation fuels revenue. So all of this makes it a home point that an API marketplace is very much valuable in this context. Okay, so now that we have talked about um, what uh, an API marketplace is, then let's start talking about that interactive marketplace and the components that are needed in order uh, to build that interactive marketplace. Okay. So one thing that we come across when we are talking about marketplaces is uh, an idea that if you have a developer portal, then you think that, okay, you, you do have an API marketplace. <clears throat> I think so Asanka mentioned this yesterday during his keynote as well. So having a portal is required for a marketplace, but it's not only the marketplace because you need multiple providers to come and uh, uh, host their APIs on this marketplace. And then you need several other components, sometimes components that as a marketplace user, you wouldn't see, but still the inclusion of those components actually makes your overall experience wholesome. So it's actually a complete ecosystem which has several components to it. Now, so let's start off. Uh, uh, let's start off by talking about the two main components that are very much visible to the main stakeholders of an API marketplace. So that's the API publisher and the developer portal. So the an API provider is is the main stakeholder who would be uh, interacting with an API publisher. So the, the capabilities that they, are, they look for and that would add value to their journey within this marketplace would be the ability to create APIs very easily. Now, that means that you should be able to uh, intuitively create the APIs. You, you have some sort of a portal to create APIs from scratch, asking just the right questions. Or you also have other means of creating APIs with existing definitions. So for example, if you already do have a Swagger definition, which depicts that back end API that you want to uh, be converted into a managed API on your marketplace, you can, you should be able to use that in order to start creating your API. Then uh, uh, the publisher uh, also should provide the ability for that API provider in or, who, in order to basically add certain uh, business details so that uh, the consumers would be able to understand where this is coming from. Uh, then for an API, now we, we spoke about API being a special commodity in a marketplace because it required several value additions if it were to be very appealing to the consumers. So an API would require to have uh, the option of including multiple security options to it, uh, different uh, throttling policies to it. Then maybe uh, uh, the API provider needs to provide that uh, user guide or how to 
more documentation about how this API could be used so that the consumer's life becomes very easy. So all of these capabilities are things which are sought, which are sought for in an API publisher as functionality that would make the life of the API provider to be easy because they are the ones who are going to create it as well as the materialization for the API uh, consumer. And then finally, it should be very easy for the API provider to do lifecycle management and push these created APIs onto, uh, onto the marketplace. So basically converting it from just a designed and created API uh, into a published API. Now, this means that sometimes when you do a publish of an API, certain back office operations needs to kick in. So the API definition needs to go and get updated. Then uh, it needs to start to be visible on the developer portal. Uh, then uh, if there are artifacts that are created, these need to be deployed to the various gateways that they would be invoked at and so on. But the API pub, uh, provider doesn't need to worry about this. Instead, when the API provider just makes a decision, okay, my API is ready to be sent to be published, the, the component, the, the platform underneath should be able to support all of that. Let's next move to the developer portal. So the main uh, the main stakeholder who basically works on this uh, component would be the API consumer. So uh, one main uh, uh, entry point that an API consumer uh, would be looking at is to be able to onboard to the developer portal in a very easy manner. Now, <coughs> that means, sorry, that uh, this uh, uh, API consumer should be able to uh, onboard in a self-service manner. Then if, if required, certain validations should happen. So maybe you need to check whether a valid uh, credit card uh, can be added. Maybe you need to check whether uh, certain uh, uh, qualifications are there if this is a marketplace for a particular organization and so on. So uh, such things needs to be uh, provided by the underlying platform. So the consumer basically shouldn't be doing uh, all of these in a painstaking manner. Instead, their experience would be to simply enter a form and press a button saying, I'd like to be onboarded. But the, the platform should provide those workflows, the ability to uh, run those tasks in the back end, and then basically get an administrator to approve if there are there's a manual approval process that is there and so on. So all of that are capabilities that are expected to have a very good uh, experience for the API consumers onboarding. Next. Now the consumer has signed up, is ready to log in and he or she logs in to the developer portal. So when you log into the developer portal, you need to be able to provide some context to that consumer. So you need to basically say, okay, what type of APIs are available in this marketplace? Um, then maybe give a snippet of this is like the trending API and so on. Then if you are a new developer, application developer, uh, there might be uh, a branched off section saying, okay, this is how you use APIs within your application, maybe uh, uh, show some samples and so on. So all of this is providing context into application development using APIs before you actually start looking for that particular API that you're looking for. But this is important to make the journey of the API consumer really good. So. Once this API uh, consumer starts looking for APIs, the search, the discovery process needs to be there. So the publisher would basically configure that API saying, uh, uh, these particular APIs are relevant to a particular type of API consumer, or they would tag APIs so that the consumer can basically search based on tag, based on category and so on. The 
the developer portal or the storefront should basically be able to materialize those configurations and visualize it to the uh, API consumer so that they can easily uh, pick it. Then once that, uh, once that perfect API is found, the consumer would like to try it. So that's another capability that is needed. And after that, they would like to get a jump start. So uh, providing SDKs, um, uh, using any language that you want, basically to use in your application would be a real advantage. And finally, there should also be ways of uh, providing feedback and then being able to see this feedback by API consumers. So these are capabilities that are really important to be in the developer portal component of an API marketplace. Okay. Then the next most important component in an API marketplace is security. This is something that would support both providers and consumers. Now we spoke about um, API consumers being able to uh, onboard and then sign in in a seamless manner. And if they actually are able to sign in with an existing ID they have, that would be really great. So this calls for the security component to provide either uh, on, on uh, that uh, API marketplace IDP itself to do a provision or else to do a federation to an existing external IDP for logging in as well as uh, for API authentication and authorization as well. Now, in an API marketplace, it's not just the API publisher and the store that is there. You would also have many other portals that are relevant to that organization. And uh, these would be external portals as well. In some cases, you would need to um, have to authenticate into these uh, multiple portals. Now, having to enter your credentials into each and every portal is a pain. So providing SSO across all of these portals is something that that security component can easily provide to make that journey or experience for providers and consumers. Then of course, a uh, very basic requirement, but still uh, which should be mentioned is API security. So how would the security component provide API security, the different options that are available? Then the ability to provide finer grain access control. This is again something which is uh, important uh, and we see used heavily uh, throughout our own customers uh, when there is an API uh, with multiple resources in it. Then of course, uh, the ability of that underlying platform to uh, provide threat protection mechanisms for these APIs. So, various schema validation, request response um, validation, and so on. And then uh, in some cases, before an API is actually being uh, used in a particular enterprise application or a mobile application, uh, the, the application developer and would need to know how, how, uh, how solid this API is. And if that underlying platform that is uh, fueling this API marketplace can provide a full security audit on that API, that would really be a good advantage. So these are the some of the key capabilities that would benefit uh, both providers and consumers uh, in an API marketplace from a security point of view. The next important component would be governance. So governance would be mainly used by API providers where they would like to see uh, how the different APIs uh, are, uh, they are in the various life cycle stages. And then also basically that underlying platform again needs to give the flexibility to the marketplace owner to uh, create life cycle stages that are required by different providers. So that capability is really good. And then of course, uh, where you could also do a couple of control actions behind the scenes uh, through workflow. So if you, if for example, we spoke about signing up or onboarding an API consumer, that's a control activity as well, governing uh, to make sure that it's a correct 
uh, capability, uh, the, the qualifications are there for a consumer to onboard a particular API marketplace. And then maybe before an API has been published, certain checks needs to be done. So such capabilities are things that are expected from that underlying technical platform. Insights are very much important in an API marketplace. And how is this achieved? Through analytics. So providers and consumers both would basically uh, uh, benefit from this. So providers would get an in, uh, would get insight based on their APIs, which APIs are really, really popular, which APIs are not used much. That feedback would give them uh, ideas on how to create more of those popular APIs. And then uh, for the consumers, the the, the insight on the APIs and the usage and so on would give them how the market is using these APIs. And then uh, analytics would also provide certain capabilities such as notification alerts, which basically for the provider side would indicate whether there are problems in APIs, whether an API is being targeted uh, uh, so that they need to put special attention into it to see who's going, who's basically targeting to uh, maybe uh, uh, create a down service for that API. And then from the consumer side of view, if there are new uh, API versions available, being able to push that info. So all of this is driven through analytics. Then this is an API marketplace and uh, revenue uh, generation is an incentive, obviously. So monetization needs to be linked to uh, this uh, whole uh, API marketplace ecosystem. Now, the underlying platform should be able to easily integrate with the uh, billing engine. And then on the marketplace side, you should be able to define billing plans which could be linked to APIs which are visible to API consumers so that they know what uh, uh, billing plans are there for certain APIs. And then at the same time, that billing engine needs to uh, provide the ability for providers to uh, create accounts so that they can basically receive the revenue for subscribers to create accounts so that they could pay for their usage and then uh, also the ability to uh, get information from the marketplace because usage information needs to come from the marketplace and then provide information back to the marketplace such as an invoice and um, how much of uh, uh, how, how much a particular consumer needs to pay and so on so all of this uh, is important in an API marketplace because at the end of the day, there's also a revenue component that's going to be linked with all of uh, this. Okay, so now having gone through the different components, um, some of you might think, okay, so the next step is now for us to understand how to build the API marketplace using these components. But before you do that, I think it would be really good if we can step back and take a look at what API, what type of API marketplaces are out there. So throughout our journey with our multiple customers, we have basically collected a set of uh, API marketplace patterns. And these are basically patterns which are based on the federation of APIs. So by federation, I mean uh, multiple API providers uh, being able to push APIs onto a, a, a marketplace and the values that comes together with it. So let's take a look at uh, each one of these uh, patterns in a bit more detail so that you get an understanding of what's there and that will help you to understand what type of a marketplace you need to either build or get linked to. Right. So the first marketplace pattern that uh, we have seen is, is an internal marketplace. Now, this is an marketplace which is restricted to a particular organization. So it's an organization which has different departments, maybe different business units, or simply multiple teams. The key is that each one of these different units own APIs. And these APIs basically 
are being used by them uh, in order to do different functionalities. Now, as an overall organization, some of these functionalities are cross-cutting. Some of these could be reused by the other, other uh, units. So the whole uh, thinking behind this pattern is to promote reuse. So each one of these units own these APIs and obviously they would want to basically have some ownership of how they uh, publish these APIs into a marketplace. So, but since they all still belong to a single organization, there is some amount of uh, adherence to enterprise-wide guidelines that needs to happen. Uh, and then going through some quality controls that needs to be happen, but still while maintaining that uh, team, department, or business unit independence as well. So uh, to me, there are two flavors of this uh, of this marketplace. So uh, logically, they are, this, this, org this organization has a single uh, marketplace, a central marketplace. But physically, it could either be on shared components so that means that the different components of the marketplace are shared by all of these uh, units that own APIs. So in such a case, uh, the ability to do very good visibility control for each of these APIs is something that that underlying platform needs to provide. The second flavor of this is where each one of these units has their own component. So uh, as in the, the uh, publisher, the portal and so on. But the moment an API is pushed into their own uh, developer portal, it also gets pushed into that central marketplace. So that's the second flavor where you don't have, uh, you, you don't have 100% shared components, but you have separate components, but you converge when it comes to that marketplace portal. So the, the tech, technical underlying platform, technical capability that is required here would be the ability to publish to multiple locations. Right. Then the second uh, pattern that we have seen is uh, where uh, organization like in the internal um, marketplace, functions for some time with the different departments and with uh, by having a organizational marketplace and so on. But they re also realize that in their day-to-day -day operations, they do link with partners. And when APIs start to come into the forefront and everything becomes API driven uh, in order for their applications, for their portals, they realized that the partner capabilities also need to be available as API so that they could have that holistic uh, experience in uh, these applications and portals as well. So what happens here is, like you see in this diagram, uh, the, the different enterprise uh, department APIs are pushed onto that central uh, marketplace and then different partner organizations also start pushing APIs into that same central marketplace. So by, by combining all of these APIs in, uh, by using these APIs in the applications, you get a very good experience uh, and you can provide really good service to your customers. So, uh, so what we see here is from a, from a deployment point of view is you have that logical central marketplace where internal uh, units as well as now external partner units start pushing in artifacts. Now, from a technical point of view, this calls for the ability to integrate external identities into your marketplace. Now, the third, uh, the third example that we have uh, for a marketplace pattern is the closed group marketplace. So, so far we were looking at a, a, a particular organization having a central marketplace, either fueled or like uh, 
uh, uh, filled by APIs that belong to only that organization or to that organization and a couple of partners. The next pattern is about uh, different organizations. So you get different organizations here pushing in APIs into a central marketplace. But the difference or the important point here is that these organizations are still in a close group. So not any organization can, can come and just push APIs into this marketplace. There is a focus, a particular focus that defines this marketplace. So it could either be a couple of organizations which are working together, or it could be a couple uh, uh, organizations that belong to a certain industry. So uh, two very good examples that I can think of is one, uh, the open banking drive that we see in uh, Europe mainly. Uh, and then the second uh, example that I can think of is uh, uh, different departmental, departmental organizations working together, but under a single government of a country. Now in both these situations, there needs some sort of standardization. Uh, there needs, in some cases, so in the open banking effort, there, there's, there are actually specifications on how APIs need to be exposed and so on. So this particular pattern requires the underlying marketplace to be able to uh, specify specifications, specify a standard template that could be used uh, by the API providers so that they uh, adhere to that unification, to that standardization. Okay, so then we move to the next pattern. So here again, we are looking at mark a marketplace which is uh, powered by multiple organizations, but we remove that closed groupness. So here we open it out to anyone, and the main in incentive here is the ability to do revenue sharing. So. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an example where different organizations would be pushing their APIs into that logical central marketplace, but still uh, uh, you will be sometimes using the, uh, you will be using components of those different organizations. So. The, from a technical standpoint, the call out here is for extensive identity federation, which we had earlier also, but also the ability of the overall platform to integrate with heterogeneous IDPs and gateways. So you have, you should, if you have that capability, then being able to onboard all of these different providers could be very much easier. So the final marketplace pattern that we see is the aggregated marketplace. Now, so far, uh, it was only APIs that were being pushed into the marketplaces and then being consumed by API consumers. In the aggregator marketplace, what we see is uh, basically people being able to obtain APIs from different uh, providers, put some of these APIs together to make it an API product or parts of those APIs together to make it an API product and then go on to put it, uh, to redistribute it and sell it to uh, different API consumers. So it could be one step or it could be in two hops like you see in this diagram. So the call out here mainly is the ability to do API productization by using either full APIs or parts of different APIs pulled together, okay. So now that we understand what the different components are, well, first of all, what an API marketplace are, is, then what the different components are, and then finally what the patterns are out there, you can now start thinking of how you build that interactive API marketplace. So you have this idea of uh, what is out there, and then you need to match it with what you need in your organization. Looking at both of these aspects, you need to pick a API platform, a technology provider who provides all of these capabilities. Then the second point is, like we mentioned earlier, an API marketplace is an ecosystem. Now, 
this means that you need to think beyond just the API marketplace. So if you have APIs, you have application developers, you start to collect applications also. So it makes sense to think about building that API marketplace. With applications, you need to have more security capabilities to provide security for these applications, to onboard different users, to be able to federate and so on. So then marketplaces like this, which are like an ecosystem require workflows that could basically manage uh, the various activities that are happening. So providing that ecosystem portal and the workflow management becomes an important part in building that overall ecosystem. And finally, the ability to monitor, to analyze and learn from it. So this still remains the same, but at a larger uh, scope. So analytics and governance comes into the picture when you start building that ecosystem. Now, so far we have been looking at the different technical components, the different logical components and so on, and the stakeholders. Just building that marketplace and giving your stakeholders and saying, go ahead and use it is not going to be sufficient. You need to create that buzz around your marketplace and that's through socializing. So you need to provide incentives uh, for the stakeholders to either keep producing more APIs, to keep using more APIs, organize activities like hackathons, workshops, where you encourage both types of um, stakeholders to be active more on the marketplace. And finally, uh, define good communication model uh, that would basically reach out to all of these stakeholders. Right. So that brings us to the end of my session. So I just like to sum it up with a few key takeaways. Now, what I would just want to reiterate is, so an API marketplace is definitely a mandatory value addition. Interactions really matter. So you need to understand how interactions work and what is required to uh, basically make those interactions really good. You need to pick which API marketplace pattern suits you best. Figure out what those components are. And then basically don't just stop at the API platform. Think about building that full ecosystem. <laughs>